Hi everyone, I'm Tom, I'm the tech chap. I like to test, analyze, and review the latest smartphones, tablets, and consumer tech. Listen, this is my first video, so please be nice. We're gonna be talking about the LG G3. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Tom, the tech chap, and six years ago this week, I posted this shockingly bad video. This was my first ever video uh, on January 30th, 2015, I think it was. And now I've just passed 1 million subscribers, which is all thanks to you guys, and it's absolutely crazy. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to look back, see how far I've come, and more importantly, how far phones have come in the last six years. So this was my first ever video, a review of the LG G3, which I bought with my own money. I borrowed my dad's Canon 7D camera, and I also shot this in his office. It actually did quite well. I mean, 31,000 views, although that is over six years. But most importantly for me, I had some really nice comments which made me keep at it. It also helped that this was a genuinely great phone at the time, and you may recognize a couple of people who also reviewed this. The G3 from LG is the first of their phones I've reviewed, so it's actually my first experience with their particular flavor of Android. What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV, and this is my hands-on review of the LG G3. Now that this is out, and now that we know everything we know about it, it's clearly easily one of the best phones that's come out this year, if not the best. So six years later, and now I've got a fancier camera. I think my hair's gone back a couple of inches. And I bought this on eBay, the LG G3, for 70 pounds. It's not cheap, actually. And all I had to do to blow your mind and think, holy moly, I miss old phones, is this. Removable batteries and micro SD and, of course, a headphone jack. I mean, the S21 Ultra just can't keep up. And on the off chance you missed my initial review from six years ago, a quick recap of the G3, which at the time was competing with the Galaxy S5. And we get a pretty big 5.5 inch screen, 16 by nine of course, so a little wider and boxier than more recent 20 by nine phones. Amazingly though, it also has a quad HD resolution. Even the S21 Plus is only full HD. But what's really surprising is just how light this thing is. At 159 grams, it makes modern phones feel like bricks. Of course, that's because we have a plastic body with this brushed metallic finish, but I still really like the look of this thing. And the other benefit of having a plastic back is it's removable with a 3000 milliamp hour hot swappable battery. The only downside is the rubbish old micro USB port. Is it just me or do you think older phones had a little bit more personality than they do these days. I think one of my favorite phones back from this era was the HTC One M7 and the M8. I loved that phone. I think it had such an awesome design with that metal body. But what about you? Is there a particular phone from the past that you think really stood out or was one of your favorites? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, one thing we don't have with the G3 is any kind of biometric security. So there's no fingerprint reader or face unlocking. Although you do have the option of a knock code, which I remember being very excited about at the time. Now on the inside, we have a Snapdragon 801, along with either two or three gigs of RAM and 16 or 32 gigs of storage. The question is though, can the Exynos 2100 keep up with the Snapdragon 801? This could be close. Well, unfortunately, the latest Geekbench app isn't supported on the G3 anymore, but in 3 d Mark slingshot test, the S21 Ultra is about nine times faster. So if we fire up a bit of Call of Duty Mobile on the G3, bearing in mind this game came out about five years after the phone launched, and it plays, well, not that bad actually, albeit on very low settings, but we're getting a solid frame rate. I half expected this not to play at all. I'll tell you what the craziest thing is, that when this came out in late 2014, this was a flagship phone, and yet it only cost about 500 pounds, which in today's money is about 550. So about half the price of something like the Galaxy S21 Ultra, you could get two of these for the price of one of these. It's funny because in some ways I'm thinking, oh, not much has really changed. I mean, we've got Android 5 on here, which added this material design, so it still feels kind of modern, and it's not fundamentally any different to use. But at the same time, next to something like this, well, the S21 Ultra feels like a phone from the future. But one thing I'm really curious about is the camera. How does this compare with the latest and greatest? Well, we've got a single 13 megapixel camera on the back, no ultra wise telephotos or periscopes back in those days. However, the G3 was one of the first to add a laser autofocus, and I'm also pretty surprised to see it supports 4K video. And actually, looking at some photos, they're not that bad actually. And in good light, the G3 can still take a decent photo. 
However, if I bring in the S21 Ultra, which to be fair is six years newer and costs over twice as much, it shows that while year on year we may only see iterative upgrades these days, over time it does add up and we're getting much sharper and more detailed photos, dynamic range is miles ahead, and I think the biggest advancement in camera tech in recent years has been night mode. In low light, the G3 just can't keep up. Switching to selfies, and it really is impressive how far we've come in just a few short years. It's so much sharper, and again with night mode for the selfie camera as well these days, it just shows that megapixels don't really tell you that much. It's all about the size and the quality of the sensor, and crucially the software and the processing with more advanced image signal processors in the latest chips. So not only was this the first ever phone I reviewed, in fact, the first ever video I made, which for me holds a bit of a special place uh, because this is where it all started, but it's also pretty surprising that while in some respects it feels like a million years ago, in others, it's still a pretty usable phone. It's not that much different. Camera quality can't keep up and it's obviously uh, not as fast and there's no high refresh and some of those extras. Uh, but then again, we've also lost some features. No headphone jack or micro USB or removable batteries. This was one of the killer features back in the day and I kind of miss it to be honest. Being able to just take a couple of extra batteries with you, hot swap them out and you're then instantly back to 100%. Although of course now we have much faster charging, also bigger batteries, so that kind of offsets it a little bit. But the big question is, if we go forward another six years to say 2027, what features do you think we'll have then as standard that will make something like the S21 Ultra feel outdated and last gen? Do you think by that point we'll all have folding rollable phones, everything will be under the screen and we'll have 20 lens camera setups? Give me your predictions in the comments below. And just to celebrate my 1 million subscriber special, I didn't really want to advertise it, but I want to give away a brand new Galaxy S21 Ultra. All you have to do is click on the Gleam link below and just make sure you subscribed and left a comment. That's pretty much it. It's an international giveaway, nice and simple, and I'll pick a winner at random in the next couple of weeks. Just a little token to say thank you really uh, for supporting me and sticking with me as we've grown this channel and this community. 2021 is going to be an awesome year and if we're going to continue to see the kind of uh, innovations and advances that we've seen in the last five or six years, I can't wait to see what's coming up next and to show you guys. So thank you very much for watching, good luck in the competition and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat. So that's about it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I, I look forward to any questions or any messages you may have. This has been my first review, so please go easy. And you have a great day and it's been really nice. Have fun. Cheers.